Uh, I'm gonna record. Uh, OBS. Uh, I've uh, I've looked uh, into. Uh, yeah. I looked at so it, here, but uh, I didn't use it. Uh, yeah. So let's let's do an introduction here. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, and put myself on. But here, we are in the initial stages of team formation for the Open Source mm -hmm. Microfactory Steam Camp. I'm talking to Michel Dory. He's actually the guy who catted up the universal access in the first place we came up with that a few years ago and he's been kind of in the background but he's good on webgl he's a definite open source fanatic and we're building the team to develop the steam camps uh, so michelle what were you thinking for the products in your um fab lab well uh, i'm looking into designing a, a, a multifunctional studio yeah uh, Based on the um, Open Building Institute uh, modules. Oh, yeah, well, nice. nice. So uh, we can start with a, a little studio and then uh, upscale when necessary. Oh, wow. Uh, first, uh, do tests with, uh, with the acoustic, uh, wow. like it's structural acoustic panels. Yeah. And I'm looking into the density of the uh, insulation materials and things like that. Yeah. And then in the studio, we could make uh, high quality tutorials. It's not only for audio, but also like for uh, video tutorials uh, with um, uh, how you call it, plexiglass um, uh, screen that you can write on. Yeah, um, nice. Uh, so all those things combined. And uh, I was also thinking about developing um, the open source hardware. A lot of things exist, but making it uh, modular, like. Uh, the camera stabilizer that's also uh, useful for um, um, that you can put on a tripod, uh, hang it under a drone. Uh, that ca can be used also for 360 photography, so it can take uh, uh, image sequences that then you stitch together with a uh, hubbin. It's an open source uh, program for uh, panoramic views. Mm. So. Uh, step by step developing uh, a toolkit for video and photography production uh, open source and i think it's that can be quite a, a big market a lot of people are interested in uh, home video and, um, and photography and with that equipment you can make like nice um, um how it's called um, um, slider videos, uh, put your video camera on a slider, make a certain movement that looks uh, very professional yeah. or uh, time-lapse photography on a slider and step-by-step -step developing things for uh, for the amateur video uh, uh, for the video fanatics uh. and I think it's quite yeah, it's a, it can be a big market and you can make uh, workshops around it. Uh, that's like one of the, huh. the directions I'm looking at. Yeah. You can make nice quality videos for your, uh, to promote open source in general, tutorials, and you have a product that you can sell and build workshops around. Yeah. It's like, uh, no, that's, that's right. That's good. Um, what do you think about the three product? Uh, well, two questions from OSC. Uh, specifications RSC metric selection product selection is a billion dollar plus market you think this is a billion dollar market I don't think so does it uh, a billion dollar market maybe not but uh, maybe a uh, 10 million hmm I think you see a lot of advertisements uh, for all kinds of cameras and yeah, for Canon and Nikon and what uh, have uh, uh, quite a lot of them and it costs a lot of money so if there's a lot of advertisements that means a lot of people buy it and it's a, it's a huge market if yeah. they can uh, if you, they can extend their, uh, their their tools to do uh, more professional things with it like camera sliders and things like that professional uh, grades are quite expensive not for the amateur if you can make those things and it can be based on the uh, universal access maybe yeah, yeah um, absolutely absolutely i think uh, yeah it's, uh, so are you thinking no that's uh, definitely uh, valuable like especially if 
you know, if this is like the back doors to Open Building Institute modules where we're building a studio out of it, that would be pretty cool. Just like we can make small modular greenhouses using OBI modules. Um, are you thinking also, because for me, I would like to get my hands on um, a TV studio or video studio so I can get back to the pulpit. Um, I haven't done much video, you know, with myself. I used to do the simple videos all the time but but doing a studio for like a podcast or other things are you thinking video in there as well yeah well no, uh, um it's, it's it will be multifunctional we were thinking about starting with audio so you can make a mm -hmm. quite good uh, audio recordings yeah uh, for uh, podcasts uh yeah. video then we also, maybe for motion capture in the long run, uh, for um, 3D animation, things like that. Ah. Uh, it's all but with the, with the same equipment. You can make 3D scans with um, uh, a Kinect. Huh? And, uh, but you can use a Kinect also for motion capture. So, reuse all kinds of equipment. Um, yeah, making it modular and multifunctional. Yeah. And what do you think for the Steam Camp itself, uh, the th selection of the three products that we're looking at? So it's the Raspberry Pi tablet, a drone, and a vacuum robot. What do you think of the, those three? Because uh, my advisor suggested those th is that they're cool. Like, he loves them. They're cool products. They're all also gift gift items that you can do, mm -hmm. and all all actually are big markets. Like if you talk about tablets, that's a many billion dollars. Talk about drones, that's a billion dollar market. If you talk about uh, vacuum robots, I'm not sure they're a billion dollars, but they're pretty big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, are those exciting to you? Yeah, of course. Uh, the the um, the vacuum robot uh, doesn't appeal to me that that much, but uh, the the tablets and what was the other one? Sorry. Uh, and uh, drone. Ah, uh, the drone. Yeah, of course. I've been looking into drones a bit, also uh, like foldable drones. Yeah. Uh, compact, uh, especially for. Um, um, 3D mapping areas, uh, then to use that um, 3D mapping and um, um, how is um, permaculture yeah. Uh, yeah. design. No, definitely. Yeah, there's. It's very useful. Yeah, yeah just getting uh, better videos. For us, also, like I'm thinking, the drone would be. Now, if you add, yeah, the advanced version of the drone will be a planter for the aquapana greenhouse, so it'll carry the little plants into the towers so that it's fully automated. So that's higher tech, but it's definitely drone territory for agriculture. Uh -huh. the, the drones? You use the drones for what? Aquapana greenhouse. So you've got a seed tray of little plants and in the greenhouse that we have right now, we have 1,000 plants. It takes some time to do, so we can have a drone taking the little plants and dropping them, because they're little, they're little container, uh, they're in little container pots, and we can mm -hmm. have the drones actually s put them into the towers from the seed tray. So set up the system, design it for automated planting, like mm. that. And there's ways you can do that, like if you have AI and vision, yes, that's then you can do our current towers, but you can do a more simplified system. There may be like a guide rail or something where the drone knows where to go and stuff like that. But I mean, we got to do it. I mean, th that's the perfect application for a drone. And if we get the team together, you know, that's the kind of stuff once we get enough people together we can get rapid development on that. There's open source ROS, you know, ROS has it, robotic operating system. That's that's the AI and motion robotic no, uh, sorts. You know ROS, right? 
ROS uh, ROS open source ROS.org <clears throat> yeah this is a big one this is robotic operating system open source libraries for robots uh, including vision and AI and simulators um, so that's all there uh, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know that. Uh, uh, yeah. So, yeah. The next step would be so take a look at the the curriculum in detail, and let's shoot mm -hmm. for a meeting. I think in about a month would be the good time for a kickoff meeting, like three weeks to a month. Like if I if mm -hmm. I get a lot of responses, let's we it'll probably happen in like three weeks or four weeks. But to that first meeting, we're gonna have to coordinate what we're developing and show show those prototypes actually well actually the first meeting according to the schedule uh, yeah we're talking about a few weeks out but let's let's see if we can nail a date for that once we have familiarity with what we want to do like once we coordinate the roles and actually prepare the content for it because we want to basically have that meeting as a kickoff to educate everybody else what everyone else is doing yeah okay I will start studying uh, this stuff immediately. <laughs> yeah. Ask yeah. your, take it to your, uh, would you mind doing me a favor? Take this to your hacker space and tell them about this. Yeah, I'll surely do that. Um, I've uh, talked about that you have a few specialists uh, in drones that have uh, built quite a few drones uh, and developing stuff also. Uh -huh. We have uh, quite a few programmers. Uh, we only started a few months ago, and the vacation period was in between, so we had a few meetings. We we're still um, like organizing and uh, task. Um, uh, uh, how is it? Uh, uh, looking at which tasks uh, which people will get. I'm a. Uh, I'm responsible for peer learning, one of the guys who, so uh, that's why we're setting up the studio to make the tutorials and... Uh, oh yeah. But it's in, in early stages, the yeah. whole uh, project. Tell your people about it. Hey, uh, now in the spirit of collaboration here, can you maybe start by taking what you learned today and like when you present this to your hackerspace people, can you do less, a simple, uh, you know, template? Just a presentation, so we can get help me make a presentation about this. So, like mm -hmm. you're telling your team, you're starting from scratch. Let's start by doing a little power uh, PowerPoint, uh, Google Doc presentation. Um, yeah, can we do that? Yeah. See okay. if we can do that. Now, log. You do have your hours. Use them because you're putting a little bit of time in there. You didn't log your time. Can you do it? Yeah. And yeah, I will. Uh, so what I'm looking at here for people viewing this on the screen is uh, so Michelle's doing these. This is WebGL fully open source tool chain, including Blender and FreeCAD. So we're exporting our FreeCAD files into Blender and generating some scripts, uh, JavaScripts, to end up with a product like this, explodable um, images that are embedded in a right in a wiki. So this is an example of the CNC circuit mill, and this is really cool for educational purposes. Down here we have the 3D printer, fully embedded in a fully open source tool chain. And here's a simple um, example that I did. This is what you can do straight out of FreeCAD. But in order to make it look much better with the shading, you gotta manipulate a little bit. But Michelle's working on uh, all those tool chains to do that. Uh, I'd like to have this for the incentive challenge we're going to run next year so that when we're embedding like when we uh, do all the modules for the cordless drill in our incentive challenge we're going to be able to embed the three images so that somebody taking a look at what you've done you can embed the images so people can get oriented really quickly and study your work so it's definitely very relevant for rapid learning and rapid collaboration because if we're going to have like a thousand people collaborate you have to be very careful about collaborative waste. So collaborative waste, I think, refers to mostly the fact that it's going to take you time to study what everybody else has because we're all working together. So if you have explodable images like that, I think that will uh, promote the rapid learning quite a bit. So very relevant. All right, so let's do it. Yeah.
And I'm going to continue emailing people. And I'm basically right now what I'm doing is taking uh, people from the Oshawa hardware list. Uh, so there's the Oshawa directory. Now you can Google that. But here you have a list of certified open hardware projects. And I'm going through the, the contacts there uh, to contact anyone else who wants to collaborate in an open source microfactory Steam camp. So that's, that's what I'm doing right now, going through all that list and talking to people uh, until we get this thing done. Right, Michel. Well, anything else? No, no. Uh, that's uh, enough material to uh, to start with. I'm I'm quite pleased about this OBI studio, man. That's that's kind of cool because it's such a perfect case of building upon the modules and our modules. Yeah, I mean, it definitely lend itself to it. So we should do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same basic structure, but yeah. the panels is a. Uh, always be on one side, then um, insulation material, uh, maybe layered uh, d uh, uh, different densities to um, dampen uh, a, a broader frequency range. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm looking, still looking into it and going to do some experiments with uh, the right combinations. And then uh, just a burlap sheet over it so the sound can get in and get dampened by the insulation. We will have to do a test, and you can, you can start with a small, um, uh, a small studio, and then um, uh, size it up if you want to. The, the modules are reusable, of course. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Okay. okay. All right. So thanks a lot. Yeah, we'll be in touch on this. So I'll, I'll get busy contacting more people. So mm -hmm. yeah. Take care. And I will be working on the tutorials for the WebGL. Awesome. Okay. Thanks a lot. We'll we'll talk soon. So. Ciao. Bye bye.